Yesterday, I defined momentum in two different ways. There was an everyday understanding of momentum, the way that we typically think of momentum when we're trying to understand it. And then there was a more scientific, a more technical definition, a more use this definition on a test if you're asked kind of definition. I want you to give me one of those definitions right now. I don't really care which one. Give me one of them right now. Yeah, Evan? The product of the object's mass and velocity. Okay, good. The product of an object's mass and velocity. Is that the real definition or the way that we use to understand it? It's the real definition. Good. Um, we know that because like, we, when you hear that definition, the product of an object's mass and velocity, which, by the way, leads to this equation, right? It doesn't really help us in too much of any significant way to understand what's really going on, right? Okay, we can do the math and whatever, but it doesn't really help us to understand what it really is. Rather, the next definition, which is a result of mass and velocity, helps us to understand what momentum really means. What's the other definition? Yep. How hard it is to stop something, right? Right? Like, that tells us more of what we're talking about here, right? A train is moving down the track. We know a train is moving down the track, has lots of momentum. Why does it have a lot of momentum? Because it's hard to stop. The more harder it is to stop, the more momentum it has. But why is it hard to stop? Well, because it's got lots of mass. And maybe it has lots of velocity as well. The heavier something is, the harder it is to stop, the more momentum it has. The faster something is moving, the harder it is to stop, the more momentum it has. Does that make sense? What are my units? Oh, sorry, one more question before I ask you that here. The other term that we often mix up with momentum, but we're not going to mix it up because we're smarter than that, is inertia. What's the difference between momentum and inertia? There's a subtle difference, but an important difference. Who can remember what that difference was? Yep. Good. Good. Momentum has mass and velocity. Inertia only depends upon mass. So if you have a train that's at rest, it has a lot of inertia, zero momentum. If you have a train that's moving, it has a lot of inertia, and it also has a lot of momentum when it's moving as well. People get this. This is a, a common misconception with inertia. People think that the faster something's moving, the more inertia that it has. That's not right. The faster something's moving, the more momentum it has. It's harder to stop something that's moving fast than it is to stop something that's not even moving. But it's not harder to change its motion. Right? If I have an, a, an object that's sitting here on this desk at rest, and I want to change its velocity by 2 meters per second, it's the, same, it's the same amount of force, of energy that's required if something's moving at 20 meters per second and I want to change it by 2 meters per second. Does that make sense? It's no easier, no harder to change the motion of something that's at rest than something that's moving. It's harder to stop something that's moving, but not harder to change its motion, to speed it up or slow it down. So momentum versus inertia. Okay, here's my momentum equation. M stands for mass. What are the units? Kilograms, right. We're always going to use kilograms there. Be careful if you take chemistry, because in chemistry you use grams, right? We know this, right? But when you're going back and forth, especially if you have chemistry period three, that's an easy mistake to make. Just be aware of that. V stands for, what is it? No, not speed. Velocity, velocity right. Velocity. What are the units for velocity? Meters per second, good. And P stands for momentum, of course. That's a lowercase p, right? If it's capital P, it's power or it's pressure. Lowercase p with a little arrow over it is momentum. And what would the units for momentum be? Kilograms times meters per second, good. Kilograms times meters per second. By the way, mass is a scalar, velocity is a vector. When you multiply a scalar by a vector, you get a? A vector, right? So momentum is going to be a, a vector. And its direction is exactly the same as the direction of the velocity. If the velocity is to the east, the momentum is east. If the velocity is downward, the momentum is downward. Good? Uh, we don't see this very often, but we do with work in physics 20. Force times displacement, two vectors. When you multiply a scalar by a scalar, you get a scalar. 
Scalar by a vector gives us a vector. Do you know what we get when we multiply a vector by a vector? Like force times displacement? Vector by a vector gives us a scalar. Yeah, work is a scalar, right? It's changed in energy. Okay, let's take a look at uh, the worksheet that we had for homework last night. Uh, worksheet number one, I'll give you four answers to the first four questions that you had, and then we'll take a look at one or more of those questions if we need to. Question number one, I got 3.20 times 10 to the 4 kilograms meters per second. Number two, I got 7.64 times 10 to the 4 kilograms meters per second. Three, I got 3.00 meters per second. And number four, I got, uh, I, get, I, I put it in scientific notation, but you could put it in standard notation. It doesn't really matter. 4.28 times 10 to the negative 2 kilograms meters per second. Any of those questions we need to go over? One of them, two of them, three of them? No? All right, then. You guys are just that smart. All right, then. Well, let's take a look at another example question, example number two in the package that I handed out to you yesterday. Example number two... It says a 1.5 kilogram object falls from rest, from a height of 14 meters down to the ground level. What's the momentum of the object as it hits the ground? This is much like the question we did yesterday, right? Look at yesterday's example question. Baseball traveling west, what's its momentum? Object falling down, what's its momentum? What's different about it? What's different about it, Evan? Oh, be careful there. You're, you're right. We need velocity. We don't have it, right? And that last question, we want to find momentum. Momentum is m times v. Both of these questions, right? We want to find momentum. I'm going to just put that over here. We want to find momentum. It's m times v in yesterday's question and in today's question. But we don't have v here. What v do we need, though? That's where you made your mistake. What v do we need? Yes, it's the final the final velocity. If you take a look at that physics 30 and 13 pages document, I mean, we've covered this, right? This, this, this. This is what I'm talking about with G here, 12G, momentum after acceleration. Like, figure out a final velocity, and then say P is equal to M times V. So find VF, and then do what we did yesterday. Got it? Momentum after acceleration. It's not always acceleration due to gravity, by the way, like it is in this question. You're going to see on your worksheet there's a couple that aren't. Okay. We know what M is. We've got to find V. I'm going to call this, by the way, PF and VF. You don't really have to, but it is a fine, all right, technically. Any ideas how we might find that VF? I, I got a couple thoughts in my mind right now, but there's actually more than a couple ways. Just two that are probably the most efficient ways. David, what's one way? Yeah, yeah, that's probably the way that most people would pick. That's an equation that's on your data sheet, um, your Physics 30 data sheet, but we did it pretty early on in Physics 20 as well. We used it a million times in Physics 20. VF squared is equal to VI squared plus 2AD. What would VI be in this question? It would, it would be zero, right? Yeah. So I'm just going to cross that off. Be careful with that. At some point, I don't remember whether it's on a quiz or on your unit assignment or your unit test or where it is, but at some point, you're going to see a question like this, but VI is not zero. And lots of you will mess up on that. Lots of you will just do exactly what you're doing here, set it equal to zero, and get the wrong answer. Guess what? As a multiple choice question, that option is going to be there for you. So you've got to think you got the right answer. Okay, look at it. If VF is zero, okay, make it zero. If it's moving at the top, then don't make it zero. Okay, anybody have the other way? Anybody know the other way that I'm thinking of? Like, that's fine. That'll give us the right answer. Absolutely. 
Here, let's, let's just do it this way, get the, get the answer, and then we'll check out the other way, okay? We're going to say here VF is equal to the square root of 2 times neg 9.81. What's the displacement here? 14? Neg 14? Negative 14? Yeah, because it's down, right? If we're making gravity negative, we better, because it's down, we better make... We better make uh, the displacement negative because it's down. Uh, we get for this one 16.5734. Um, like really, by rights, you should go like an infinite number of decimal places there. But realistically, if you go four or five, it's okay. It's going to give you the right answer every time. Anybody think of the other way yet? We don't really need another way, right? Because like, we, we got our funnel here, but there is another way that I'm thinking of. No? Is your hand going up? Yeah, yeah? OK. D is equal to VIT. OK, now I want you to know that that is a perfectly valid equation here because this object is accelerating as it falls, and all of those equations up in that corner are valid here, right? But if you think you use d is equal to vit plus 1 fat squared, vi is 0, you got d, you got a, you'd solve for t there, right? And that's not what we're looking for. It's not wrong, but it's, it, but it's not what we're looking for. Now, you might solve for t there and then use time in another equation to solve for VF. That wouldn't be the most efficient way to do it, but it would work. Yeah, it would work. Here's what I'm thinking. You guys remember this? What is that? EI, EF. What is that? Yeah, conservation of energy, right? What kind of energy do you have at the beginning of this? If it's at rest, not moving? Potential, MGH, right? What kind do you have at the end? What kind do you have at the end? Yeah, 1 half mv squared. Mass is cancel. If you solve for VF here, guess what it works out to be? So it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter which way you do it, right? It doesn't matter. All right. Let's sub in now our mass times our velocity. I'm going to make a mistake here on purpose, a small mistake, but a mistake nonetheless. I want you to stop me or correct me when you figure out what that mistake is, okay? It's going to be small, so look for something subtle. My mass here is 1.5 kilograms. My final velocity is 16.5734 meters per second. Again, really we should go to like infinite number of decimal places, but four is fine. Four or five is okay. Okay, when I multiply those together to two significant figures, I should get uh, 25 kilograms meters per second. Anybody catch my little error? Mason? Um, it needs a direction. Yes, it does. What is it? Well, math, like you can see that, right? Like conceptually, but mathematically, how do you know it's down? Where's the negative, though? On the 16? But this was positive over here, right? What did I solve for over here? What did I solve for over here? 16 is what? Final speed. What do I need? Final velocity. So you get the final speed of 16. That's fine. You just got to recognize it. Wait a second. I got to figure out the direction myself. It's not very hard to figure out direction, right? When something's falling, what's the direction? Down. So let's just make it negative, and let's make that negative. Now, the alternative to that is you could have just recognized conceptually at the end of the problem, oh, wait a sec, this is going down. So I'm just going to write the word down there. That, that would be fine. Negative 25, 25, or 25 down, either one of those is fine. Let's have a look at worksheet number one again. But this time we're going to look at questions five to eight on worksheet number one. Notice the question number five. We're not talking about gravity here, right? 
we, but we have the acceleration. It's 2.00 instead of 9.81. Um, we also have time instead of displacement. You're still going to find final velocity. You're just going to use a different equation to do it. It's the same thing except a different equation to get there. Six is pretty similar to what we did. Seven's a little tricky. See what you can do with that one. As you're working on these, I'll take a walk around. Don't hesitate to stop me and ask questions as you're working. So we'll get number seven here now, since you guys have been struggling long enough with that one. Seven says a one kilogram rock is thrown up into the air from ground level at a speed of eight, travels up to max height, returns to the ground. What does it do at max height? It stops, like in instantaneously, right? Stops, and then comes back down. Listen, if it starts at eight and it decelerates as it goes upward at 9.81, and then stops, and then accelerates downward at 9.81 as it comes down, how fast is it going to be moving when it comes back down? Eight, right? As long as it comes to the same height as it started with, right? It's going to be the same speed. So we're going to say the F here would just be negative 8.0 meters per second, or negative 8.00 meters per second. Does that make sense? Now, mathematically, if you have a little bit of trouble kind of wrapping your head around what we just said, you can do this mathematically. You could have said Vf squared is equal to Vi squared plus 2ad. For this entire trip up and down, what's the displacement? Starts at ground level, ends at ground level. What's the displacement? Zero. Okay. 2 times a times 0 is 0. That whole term disappears. So Vf becomes equal to the square root of Vi squared. Right? Well, in other words, Vf is the square root of 8 squared. What is that? 8, right? It's, it's the same number. So conceptually, you, you, if you get it without doing the math, that's fine. Don't even, don't even need to show your work there. If you don't, show your work and get 8. Okay. Now, number 8, I'm not going to do this with you, but I do want to point out that Number eight looks a lot like number seven. We try to analyze the whole trip, probably using Vf squared is equal to Vi squared plus 2ad. How many people tried that? Vf squared, Vi squared, 2ad for the whole trip, up and down? You can't do it, because you have too many unknowns. You don't know what Vf is, you don't know what Vi is. Doesn't work. So try something different. How about we try analyzing just the trip down? If we're analyzing just the trip down, David, what's the initial speed if we're analyzing just the trip down? Right. So try that. That gives us another variable, right? Then solve for Vf. See what happens there. That should work out for you to get Vf, and then you just say P is equal to M times V. Okay, I'm going to ask you to finish that up, questions 5 through 8 for homework this weekend. I want to do one more example with you right now, and then we'll call it a day. This is example number 3. This one, oh, this one's got kinetic energy in there. One thousand kilogram car moves at ten meters per second. Twelve thousand kilogram, twelve hundred kilogram car, sorry, truck moves at twelve meters per second. What's the momentum and the kinetic energy of the system, not of each one, but of the system, if the car is traveling north and the truck is traveling south? Hey, first thing I want to do, pick up the red pen. I got a north and a south here, right? That's a big deal. Because typically north is positive and south is negative. Let's make, let's make my momentum blue and my kinetic energy in green. Can all of you guys see the difference there? I should have asked before I used different colors if anybody was colorblind. Last semester on our diploma exam, we had one student who's colorblind, who had no chance at one of the questions because it was so much based on color that he had, n without being able to see the different colors, he had no chance. So you just get if that ever happened, by the way, something like that, you could ask what those colors were. You just, you just can't ask the answer, obviously, but you could ask the supervisor, what color is that and what color is that? But he didn't know that, right? Uh, all right, let's find the total momentum. I'm going to say M1V1 plus M2V2. Some of you might find the total momentum separately, like momentum of object 1, then the momentum of object 2, and then combine them. I'm just choosing to combine them in the start. doesn't matter. Okay, same thing. 1,000 kilograms times 10 
meters per second plus 1,200 kilograms times, uh, I'm not going to forget to put the negative there because I circled north and south, right? When I do that, that works out to be negative 4.40 times 10 to the 3 kilograms meters per second. What does that negative mean there for my final answer? Yeah, yeah, exactly. The truck is moving, the car is moving north, the truck is moving south, the total momentum is south. The total momentum of the system is south. Now, kinetic energy, I would say uh, 1 half m1 v1 squared plus 1 half m2 v2 squared. Well, this is almost the same, except we got a square in there and a half, right? You could do this separately again, just like you could have done momentum separately. Oh, wait a second. I missed the negative on that, didn't I? On the 12th? Because it's, yeah, this is, up here, this was velocity, wasn't it? What is it here? Speed. That's, a, that's what I'm trying to get a point, the point I'm trying to make in this question, right, is that momentum is a vector, kinetic energy is a scalar. I don't care if, if, if it's south or if it's 37 degrees west of north. I don't care. The number is the number for kinetic energy, not for momentum, but for kinetic energy. The direction is irrelevant. This gives us 1.4, 1.36 times 10 to the 4 kilograms meters per second. Now, question B changes a little bit. Car is traveling north and the truck is traveling, oh no, west. That looks ugly. North and west. That's not as simple as a positive and negative, is it? Let's do kinetic energy first, okay? This time, let's do kinetic energy first. Um, what's the kinetic energy of this car and truck system? Who said that? Yeah, it's the same thing. 1.36 times 10 to the 4. Why is it the same thing? Whoops, sorry. Just noticed. That's, that's the wrong units there, right? That should be joules, right? Why is it the same thing? Like, I'm, it's a completely different direction. I'm going west instead of south. Why is the kinetic energy the same thing? Because kinetic energy is a scalar. The directions are relevant. Got it? Oh, what about momentum? What about momentum? Any ideas here? I'll, I'll, I'll give you a hint right now. The answer for momentum is not the same. Anyone have an idea? We have to add these vectors together, but it's exactly what we do. When we add a north to a west, we add a north to a west this way, right? The momentum of this guy, it was 1,000 times 10, which is 10,000 kilograms meters per second. This guy was 1,200 times 12, which is, uh, what is that, 144,000? No, 14,400. How do you find the total momentum? Don't just, do not just say 10,000 plus 14,000 is 24,000. Don't do that. How do you find the total momentum here? You got this. You got this. What is it? Uh, well, it's like that. It's like those old displacement questions in physics 20. A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared, right? Pythagorean theorem. Does that make sense? 
And then, of course, we would find the angle, because it is a vector, by using the inverse tan function. Um, that's not a huge thing for us right now. Uh, next week, we'll get into two-dimensional stuff. So don't panic about this right now. Uh, the point of this question wasn't so much to actually get the answer to this. The point of this question was to help you to understand that sometimes we need direction and sometimes we don't. With a, with a vector, we need direction. With a scalar, we don't.